This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. For Wilder, Place provided the basic backdrop for telling the story of her childhood and adolescence up to the time of her marriage at age 18 and moving out to the little house her husband had built for them on his tree claim. In making the houses that her family had lived in while she was growing up so central to the construction of her narratives, Wilder was following the practice of all genres of children's literature, as described by Pauline Dewan, spinning out stories of home. The home, she asserts, is a child's first universe. The enduring popularity of the children's novels Wilder wrote derives heavily from the images of houses and homes that occupy a central position in them, as well as from the geographical progression of her family as it is chronicled in the series. Her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, left her childhood home as soon as she could and by the time she was forty had lived on each coast and traveled all over Europe and the Near East. For several years, she became obsessed with making her home in the tiny, remote country of Albania and invested considerable emotional energy in contemplating building a pretentious dream house there. Though highly successful in the world of popular magazine and novel publishing during the 1920s and 1930s, she grew increasingly frustrated with her failure to find a subject of substantial significance to which she could tie her writing and build her reputation. Much of failure resulted from her inability to root her fiction in geographical locations that possessed a commanding resonance corresponding to that of her mother's. There are many directions one could take in writing about place in the lives and writing careers of Wilder and Lane. One could trace their moves and their travels, the places where they made their homes, the locations in which they set their stories, the social milieus in which they lived and about which they wrote, and a dozen other topics. In this section, I hone in on a topic of particular interest, the profound emotional reverberations of home and houses, in particular little houses, in their lives and writings. Homes, beyond their more practical mundane functions, serve as metaphors, according to architectural historian Gwendolyn Wright, suggesting and justifying social categories, values, and relations. Culture intersects with place, and the dwellings people inhabit are signifiers of their most deeply held values, their internal form being influenced by social, religious, and political traditions. Houses are shaped not just by materials and tools, but by ideas, values, and norms, writes Daphne Spain. They should not be regarded simply as utilitarian structures, but as designs for living. This chapter reminds us of the power of home and of place in general, in literature, and in people's lives.